This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use your mouth to move the devil out of the way. If the devil is standing in front of you, trying to tell you to stop, that what you're going to do is going to fail, that you're not going to be successful, you can literally use your mouth to blow him out of the way. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in the message today. But before I preach, Denise is going to sing for you. It's going to be great. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself. If you don't have anybody else to speak faith to you, you have a mouth. Speak faith to yourself in troubled times. And this comes with a study guide and with a book that you really need to read called Life in the Combat Zone. If you feel you're in the combat zone, you need to read this book. But hey, listen to Denise as she sings and then I'm going to continue my ministry to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
But now let me ask you a question. Why do you suppose this attack happened to the Christian church and particularly to the Apostle Paul at that precise moment? What triggered the attack? What triggered the attack? Well, turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 to a verse that has been twisted out of context so many times. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 7, a verse which Happy alluded to earlier today. And in this verse, the Apostle Paul says, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. Well, when I was growing up, I was told that Paul had a problem with pride because he had so many revelations. So God assigned the devil to him to keep him in place. But my friends, pride began with the devil. And if the devil had been charged with his assignment, he would have flamed the pride into something even bigger. The devil would not have been a help in this regard. Then what in the world is this verse talking about? Not only that, I was told in my denomination that the thorn in the flesh was some kind of a physical malady. For example, we were told that the Apostle Paul had an eye disease and his eyes just were matted with weeping all the time. We also were told that the Apostle Paul was a hunchback and he was all doubled over. We were also told that the Apostle Paul had club feet. So you can imagine, put all of this together, hunched over, can't see, club feet. I don't know how he walked all those thousands and thousands of miles to do his ministry with club feet. But yet there's not a thing in the scripture to indicate any of that is true. That is just the concoction of religion. Then what was the thorn in the flesh and why was this messenger assigned to him? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Are you ready for a revelation? First of all, he says, lest I should be exalted above measure. Hang on. It is a Greek word, hooperino. I'm going to read to you from my notes. The word hooper means over, above, and beyond. It depicts something that is way above measure and conveys the idea of something that is greater, superior, higher, better, more than a match for utmost, paramount, or foremost. It describes something that is first rate, first class, top notch, unsurpassed, unequaled, and unrivaled by any person or thing. It's over the top. The second part of the word in Greek is hiero, which describes something that's been lifted up, raised up, or supremely exalted. And when you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word huporino, which is a person who has been supremely exalted, one who has been magnified, increased, and lifted up to a place of great influence. Now that changes this verse. It means because my ministry has been so exalted, because of the influence that I have had, and then he adds through the abundance of the revelations. The word abundance, the Greek word hooperbalo, it describes something excessive, way over the top. It is the very word which was used to describe an archer who pulled back on his bow to shoot an arrow, but he shot way, 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 way over the top of the goal. And now Paul uses this to describe the kinds of divine revelation that he has received. Then he says, and because of the position of influence that has been given to me, because of the overshooting revelations that I have received, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The word thorn, the Greek word scolops, describes a dangerously sharp spiked instrument or tool. Now listen to this. It was used specifically to describe the stake on which an enemy's head was stuck after being decapitated. I'm going to put this together for you in just a moment. Then he says, the messenger of Satan. I don't know what was wrong with our denomination. 
This doesn't say the messenger of God. It clearly says the messenger of Satan. The word messenger, the Greek word angelos, it describes a messenger who is sent or dispatched on a specific assignment. It says it was a messenger dispatched by Satan, the Greek word satanas, which describes one who conspires against, and the purpose of the conspiracy was to buffet me. The word buffet me, the Greek word kolophidzo, from a word which describes the fist or the knuckles, but here it refers to re repeated beatings with the fist, unrelenting, continuous, rapacious beatings intended to distract. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Well, when you put all of that together, here is the RIV. which I'm working on, of 2 Corinthians 12, 7. This is literally what the Greek means in this verse. Are you ready? Because of the phenomenal revelations I have received, and on account of the vast number of these revelations that God has entrusted to me, and to hinder the highly visible progress I am making, a special messenger has been Satan, sent from Satan to harass me with constant distractions and headaches. There's no doubt about it. Satan wants my head on a stake. He is constantly trying to buffet and distract me in an attempt to keep me from reaching a higher level of visibility and recognition and to sidetrack me from preaching my revelations. Now that's a totally different take on that verse. May I read it to you again? Yes. Because of the phenomenal revelations I've received, and on account of the vast number of these revelations that God has entrusted to me, and to hinder the highly visible progress that I'm making, a special messenger has been sent from Satan to harass me with constant distractions and headaches. There's no doubt about it. Satan wants my head on a stake and is constantly trying to buffet and distract me in an attempt to keep me from reaching a higher level of visibility and recognition and to sidetrack me from preaching my revelations. Paul understands that progress sometimes triggers an attack. Progress sometimes triggers an attack. Don't forget, when Jesus got into his boat with his disciples to head to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, he was going to encounter the demoniacs of Gadara and set them free. And when Jesus was en route to the other side, where he would perform probably the greatest miracle he had done in his ministry up until that moment. We are told in Mark chapter 4, there arose a great storm of wind. The words there arose in Greek, the word genomai, which means out of nowhere. It was the last thing we would have anticipated. We don't know where it came from. We could never know how to predict this. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there arose a great storm of wind which was dispatched to capsize their boat so they couldn't make it to that breakthrough. But Jesus is Lord of the wind and the waves. And they made it fine to the other side. But now the apostle Paul says, because of the phenomenal revelations I've received and on account of the vast number of these revelations that God has entrusted to me, and to hinder the highly visible progress that I'm making. A special messenger has been sent from Satan to try to distract me. Huh, no doubt about it, the devil wants my head on a stake. He's trying to stop me from preaching my revelations. Well, at the time that the fire took place in the city of Rome, Paul was making unbelievable progress in his ministry. The church was emerging. The church of Ephesus had grown so rapidly that one scholar says it's possible that 50% of Ephesus had come to Christ. That would be about 100,000 people in that church. 
And suddenly, in the midst of all of this, an unlikely attack began through a demented ruler way over in the city of Rome. And the fires of persecution began. People began bailing out. And Paul says, you know what? It's not about us. It's not about us. It's because we're appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles for the which cause the devil's after what we're doing. For the which cause I'm suffering these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I know who I am. I know who I am not. I am not disgraced. I am not ashamed. And I am persuaded, the Greek word patho, I've been talking myself into a position of faith. And my friends, when you don't have anybody else to talk to, you, you have to talk to yourself. And there comes a moment when you have to stop listening to yourself and you have to start speaking to yourself. And remember that Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by. Hearing. And what does the Greek say? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And if you don't have anybody else to speak faith to you, then you speak faith to yourself. Speak it and speak it. And speak it and speak it until patho, you coax yourself into a position of faith. And then back over in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, now he gives Timothy this instruction. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The words hold fast is a translation of the Greek word echo. It means have, hold, possess, wrap your arms around it, refuse to let anybody take it away from you. Have it, hold it, possess it, have it in your possession. Have what? The form of sound words. The word form, the Greek word hupotuposis, from the word hupo, which means right next to, right alongside of. The word tupas, which is the word for a pattern or a mold. You put the two words together, it means stick by the mold. Stick by the pattern. And now Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, you know the way that I talk. And I want you to have, I want you to hold, and I want you to possess the same kind of talk that I have in my life. And Paul calls it... Sound words. Everybody say sound. The word sound, the Greek word hugiaino, which describes anything that produces a healthy state of being. Anything that produces a healthy state of being. So Paul says, even though I'm tugged this way and this way, I keep a grip on my mouth. And with my mouth, I'm speaking words that are going to produce the right results. And he says to Timothy, because Timothy's dealing with the spirit of fear, get a grip on your mouth. Watch your mouth. Don't just run at your mouth. Get a grip on your thoughts. It's time for you to start speaking the right things to yourself and quit just listening to every thought that comes through your mind. You've seen me do it, Timothy. Just like I've done it, you do it. You have, you hold, you possess, stick by the right pattern in your speech and make sure you speak words that are going to produce a healthy result in your life. And of course, if you're speaking fear, it's going to produce the wrong result in your life. We are living in a world filled with uncertainty and fear. As an end-time generation, we are facing things we never dreamed we would face and previous generations have not ever had to deal with before. Sometimes it seems like darkness has been unleashed. And as a result, many people have been gripped with fear. Others deal with fear about their finances, their health, their family, their jobs, their future. But you do not have to give in to fear. You can learn to conquer fear and speak faith to yourself. The programs in this series are being offered as a two-message set in digital and physical formats, starting at just $20. And this series will include two study guides, how to overcome a spirit of fear and how to speak faith to yourself in troubled times. We are also offering Life in the Combat Zone, Rick's classic book that deals extensively with the situation the early church faced during the brutal days of Nero 
It was a time when there was betrayal in the church, defections from the ranks, and people were troubled, but they overcame fear and learned to speak faith to themselves. They learned how to survive, thrive, and overcome in difficult situations, and Rick will show you how you can do it too. Life in the Combat Zone is available for $17. Don't miss this special offer, the series How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in Troubled Times, and the book Life in the Combat Zone. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I want to give you a report about what's happening in the construction of our new studio. Work still continues. It's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated because of all the sanctions that have stopped materials from coming to Russia, but we're doing it step by step. And today they're installing the fireplace, which is going to be the centerpiece of this big room where we're going to be filming programs. But in addition to this, there's gonna be another set over here and another set over there. So many angles and opportunities to film teaching that people can trust in this room. But of course, this is just one room. But I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this room. To think that TV programs with the Word of God are going to be filmed right here. And when I look around this room, you can see this electrical grid, grid that's gonna hold all the lights. It's on electrical pulleys, so it goes up, it goes down. It's just going to have everything we need to film the teaching of the Word of God. But hey, there's more than this. Let me show you. Well, I know you can't tell from what it looks like right now, but this really is gonna be one of the smaller studios, and this is gonna be Denise's studio, because Denise is reaching women everywhere with her programming. And right from this spot, Denise is going to be sending her teaching to women all over the world. But hey, there's another set in addition to this one. This is our third studio in this new building. You may say, why do you need three studios? Because we're filming a lot of programs. Right now, we can only film one program at a time. We have to set it up, take it down, but this will enable us to do multiple things at one time. But on both floors of this building, there are multiple offices. In fact, there are 18 offices, and in all of these offices, people are going to be doing editing, writing, producing programs, working with our network. It is amazing the activity that's going to take place in this building. And it's not about buildings, it's about people. People need the teaching of the Word of God. But it's your generous gifts that have helped us to build this and we will complete it. But right now we're in phase three of our ministry, which is paying off our Tulsa ministry headquarters. We wanna pay it off because the moment it's paid off, all of those funds will be released for us to broadcast the teaching of the Word of God around the world. And that's really our goal, to get the gospel and to teach people the Bible all over the world. They're just crying out for it and they're waiting for that signal to come with the answer that they've been seeking. So please help us as we finish phase three to pay off the Tulsa facility. Hey friend, would you please let me know what you think about this message, which I preached at Eagle Mountain International Church? I'd like to have some response from you. It's rare that Denise and I get to travel across the world and preach because we primarily work right here in Moscow, Russia. But I would like to have your response to this message. So would you please write me or call and let me know how this message is ministering to you. And when you reach out to us, Please, please, please let us know how to pray for you. We really want to pray for you, especially if you're under attack. We'll put our faith together with you for you to push through that assault. And I want you to order the series, which is called How to Overcome a Spirit of Fear and How to Speak Faith to Yourself in Troubled Times. And it comes with a tremendous study guide. The two of these together are just so powerful. And I want you to order my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. If you feel like you're in a combat zone, my friends, the subtitle says you can survive, thrive, and overcome in the midst of any difficult situation, and you can. Say amen. But let us 
know how to pray for you. And Father, I pray for the power of God to be released in my friend in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Well, I want you to remember Ecclesiastes 8, 4, it says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.